Good morning, and a very warm welcome to our service here on the 17th of October. Goodness me. Now, just a quick reminder, the clocks don't go for a bank next week. It's not next week. It's one of those very few years where it's literally the last day of October. Um, although... <laughs> I heard this week a brilliant joke, I heard it in a couple of places, that um, adding an extra year to 2021 is a bit like getting a bonus track in a Yoko Ono album. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, so, uh, so we're still at the, the usual time next week, but it's a following week that the clocks go back. But we will remind you next week, as we always do. We will celebrate Harvest Thanksgiving next Sunday um, in aid of the food bank, so if you can bring um, food bank type stuff along, which basically means not fresh produce because they, they can't store that. So tins, cereal, sugar, tea, coffee, those kind of things. If you could bring them for next week, that would be fantastic. We have a session and board meeting on Wednesday starting at seven o'clock. There's no bread on Wednesday this week um, because Kenny's not working. We might get some bread, but it'll be a very last minute thing. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, on mobile phones you can get do not disturb. Well, I put do not disturb on every night about 10 o'clock. Um, but you can set people who, will, who can break that, your kind of favourites. If they phone you, it'll ring. And my favourites are my wife, my son and the guy who hovers. <laughs> so... So he might call me on Thursday to say he's got some bread and then I'll put a, a Facebook message around to let folk know. Chances are it'll be either Thursday afternoon or Friday that we distribute it. But keep an eye on Facebook. But our cafe is still open and it's going like, like a fair. It has to be said. Uh, we, we are um, fulfilling all righteousness as far as the COVID precautions are, are concerned. But it does show, as I said last week, that this is a need that people are responding to this because we had nearly 40 again this, uh, this past week. So that's on from 10.30 to 12 on Wednesday. Um, the craft group restarted last week and very successfully. I think they had six folk, which was great. And it will be the second Monday of every month. So second Monday of every month here at 7pm. The... I don't have any um, birthdays or, or anything that I've been told of um, this week, but um, it's, believe it or not, a year to the day since um, Rachel and Scott got married here in St. Martin's. Yeah, imagine that, a year. It's just amazing how, how quickly it's gone past. So happy anniversary to them if they're watching this morning. Anybody got a, a birthday or a, an anniversary or a special occasion or just, I'm glad I survived another week. <laughs> I think most of us are in that category. Okay, we continue our readings in the, the book of Hebrews. And we are today looking at Hebrews 5. And Sandra is going to do our Bible reading today. Um, a few folks have signed up to, to do Bible reading. So if you would like to join them, then please let me know. And um, all week, Sandra's been practicing a priest in the order of Melchizedek. <laughs> so anyway, so our first hymn this morning, we stand and we sing. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
<clears throat> in, in Fergusy Park, whenever we sung that song, at the end we would go, uh, this is the day, this is the day when the Spirit came. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> so let's try that together. Here we go. <laughs> Jesus! Oh, you're brilliant. I love this congregation. I'm telling you, you go to any other congregation in Scotland and the first two rows do the actions and then the rest just look at you as if to say, I dare you. <laughs> Here, they're, they're, they're brilliant. So I hope you en enjoy that here. And also those who are watching on our live stream, we welcome you this morning and those who will be watching it on video later on. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us all pray. This is the day that the Lord has made. Gracious God, we thank you that you have made this day and every other day. And Lord, help us, even in the difficult times in which we now live, to rejoice and be glad in it because we know that you are working. We know that you are with us. We know that we can rejoice because we feel your presence with us and amongst us. Lord, help us to share that love that we have from you with others, that they also in the darkness might know the light. They also might know your love in their hearts as we know you in ours. Forgive us, Lord, for the times where we forget everything that you've done for us. Forgive us for the selfish word or the unkind thought or the thing that we haven't done, as well as the things that we have, that we know we shouldn't. Lord, you are a loving, merciful God, and you forgive us time after time. So, Lord, forgive us and renew us, that we might walk in your path and shine your light abroad. These and all our prayers we offer in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord, and in our own languages and traditions, wherever we are this morning, we say together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now to tell us all about Melchizedek, Sandra's going to come and read from Hebrews 5, verses 1 to 10. A reading from this morning comes from the book of Hebrews 5, verses 1 to 10. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honour on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, You are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. May the Lord add his blessing to these readings from his holy word.
Thank you, Sandra, and very well done. I was chatting to somebody. I, I was hobnobbing this week. Um, I've, been at, I've been at two um, functions with the moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Oh, aye. And uh, the first one on, on Monday was um, celebrating the work of the children's panel. And you know that way where you're at something and you're thinking, how did I get an invite to this? Um, so I'm still not sure. But uh, I was at that and then I was at uh, Presbytery Service um, in the, the High Kirk of St Giles on Wednesday, um, along with Kerr. That's an hour we'll never get back. <laughs> I mean, uh, we did the, the Apostles' Creed, okay? And you kind of, and I, I don't want to be critical, but in 2021, why are we saying conceived by the Holy Ghost? And we wonder why there's no lot of folk in our churches. That's just me, maybe, but it wasn't the greatest. And then there, we sung a hymn, and there are three tunes to this hymn. Two are really, really well known, and one nobody knows apart to the choir. Guess which one they picked. So, anyway, but we had wine after it. And I was just chatting to some, not in St. Giles, I should, I should hasten to say. <laughs> Although I was thinking during the service, but anyway, um, I was talking to somebody afterwards, and we were talking about um, just just you know the, the the way we work, and sometimes we don't always one one bit of the church doesn't work with the other church, the other bit of the church. And I said to them, one of my favourite sayings, "You in your small corner, and I in mine," is a wonderful hymn, but it's a terrible way to run a church. <laughs> but at least it's a brilliant hymn, so we're going to sing it now. Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light. Now, is that actually the one that's got? I've got a different order here in my. Have you got, I am so glad that my Father in heaven. Right, okay, sorry. Okay, hold that introduction in your mind, okay? Because it's not that hymn we're singing now. No, you're okay. We'll just go with what's actually written here. It's just, I've confused myself on the order of service. Okay, so we're going to sing. I am so glad that our Father in heaven. See, it's what I said to you the other day. Mistakes happen, don't edit them out, just go with it. Thank you. 
Bill has very kindly ordered, changed the order of service here, so hopefully I'll introduce the right hymn. <laughs> no, I could, we could keep, keep everyone on their toes. <laughs> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As I prepared for this week, it struck me how the lecturer seemed to get the last couple of books the wrong way round. We looked at James and we saw that it was a very practical, almost instruction book about how to follow the way, how to live for Christ. It asked questions, gave examples, and said, go do likewise. All very practical stuff. Hebrews, on the other hand, is almost the sales brochure. It's the book that explains why we should put our faith in Jesus and to, in today's passage, it's very much justification as to why people should believe in Jesus and why Jesus is so much better than the traditional Jewish high priests. Now, when we read, read this passage, we read it, strangely enough, through our own lens, our own filters. But when we do that with this passage, we miss a huge amount of meaning and symbolism that's contained deep within it. Remember that the book of Hebrews was addressed to Christian Jews, not Gentile Christians. And it, was not, and it was written as an encouragement for them not to return to Judaism, but to remain faithful to Christ. So what we can skim over as unimportant or not relevant because we don't see the context, the Jewish reader of the time would have seen so much more meaning. It would have meant a whole lot more to them. So let's go through the passage and look at how, when we look at it from a Jewish perspective, it changes the meaning. In verse, the first four verses deal with what a high priest is, and then verses 5 to 10 go on to explain how Christ meets those requirements and indeed exceeds them. In verse 1, every high priest is selected from among the people. It sounds obvious to us, but the high priest should be human. Not a heavenly being like an angel, but of flesh and blood. In addition, the priesthood was a hereditary position. All the priests were descendants of Aaron, Moses' brother, and they were from the tribe of Levi. This all going back to the Exodus. Carrying on in verse 1, and is appointed to represent the people in the matters related to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. This points to the role of priests. What was their function? What was the reason for existing? Priests were there to be intermediaries between God and the people and people and God. We couldn't, you couldn't offer your sacrifice directly to God. That was too big a step. You needed an intermediary, a priest to do that for you. Verse 2 points to a quality the high priest needs. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. This is another reason as to why the high priest has to be human. It's hard to have compassion for people if you haven't been tested yourself. Verse 3 takes this notion one step further. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. It is an acceptance that the Jewish high priests were fallible and committed sins. The high priest was allowed to access the Holy of Holies, the area behind the curtain in the temple, one day a year. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. This is when the high priest would sprinkle the sacrifice in the Ark of the Covenant, first for himself and his own sins, and then for the sins of the people of Israel. Only the high priest was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies, and it was so dangerous they even tied a rope around him in case God struck him dead so they could at least drag him back. In verse 4 it says, No one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. This verse is self-explanatory, but it also works as a link to verses 5 and 10, which go on to take each of the above headings and see how Jesus doesn't just meet the requirements, but how he surpasses all of them. 
In verse 5, in the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. This is obviously stronger than the requirements set out in the previous verse. And then in verse 6, the author adds in a further reason as to why Jesus is a greater high priest by referencing Melchizedek. Now, Melchizedek is only mentioned in the Old Testament twice, once in Genesis 14 and once in Psalm 110. He is the priest that Abraham met returning from a victorious battle, and Abraham gave him 10% of everything after Melchizedek blessed him. But the Jewish listeners to this letter would have recognized Melchizedek as being older and therefore senior to the priests from the line of Levi. All this showing that Jesus had to be a valid and better high priest. Verse 7 shows the, the compassion of Christ during his ministry on earth. He wept when he heard about the death of Lazarus. He wept over Jerusalem and he wept in the Garden of Gethsemane. And verse 8 shows his humility. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. He didn't behave like a spoiled brat. He didn't say, do you not know who my father is? He suffered onto the cross. Verse 9 continues with this, And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Now the word perfect, the root meaning is actually make complete. So it's again referencing the journey that Jesus had on earth, his earthly ministry. Qualified him for what we see in verse 10, was designated by God to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. So what does this mean to us? Well, the answer is in the last verses of the preceding chapter, chapter 4, verse 14. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. And then verse 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What the writer of Hebrews is trying to convey to the recipients of this letter, and indeed to us, is that we no longer require an earthly priest to make sacrifices or intercessions to God on our behalf. Because Jesus has already made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf and is now at the right hand God to intercede for us. We don't need to go through some fallible human. We can go directly to Jesus whenever and wherever we want. And when we do, we approach the throne of grace, not judgment. So this morning we've looked at how the writer of Hebrews set out his arguments, his mathematical proof of why Jesus is the better high priest than the traditional Jewish ones. He explained the requirements of the Jewish high priest and then systematically positioned Jesus as the better in each choice in each of the areas. So not only is Jesus our Lord and Savior, but he is also our great high priest. He is sitting at the right hand of God as our advocate, our intercessor, and above all, our Savior. Amen. We continue our worship with him, Jesus bids us shine. Please stand in person or spirit if you are able. Oh no, I've done the wrong one. No, no, no. no. small corner and I in mine. 
Let us come together in prayer. O God, we come to you because we know you'll hear our cry. We come to you because you call us near to you. We come to you because you deliver and save. We come to you now with our prayers and petitions. In the noise of voices calling for revenge and restitution, for judgment and punishment, we pray for the courage to speak out for restoration. When grief and pain, poverty and persecution leave people blind to grace and compassion, we pray for the courage to carry the light of comfort and consolation, love and forgiveness. Where the quest to even the score has left our world angry and wounded, we pray for the courage to release our grievances and seek the wholeness of all. As you intercede for us, Jesus, we intercede for our world that all may know the good news of restoration in Christ. We pray for the local and universal church. Give us the humility to walk in your way. We pray for the leaders of our nation and the nations around the world. Give them the courage to walk in peace. We pray for those who are in need. Give us ears to hear their cries and be agents of your mercy. In our praying, heavenly, loving Father, we, chose to we choose to celebrate in the midst of grief because it reminds us of hope and brings comfort to our broken hearts. We choose to celebrate in the midst of poverty because it speaks of wealth beyond material things and gives dignity, dignity to our humbled hearts. We choose to celebrate in the midst of conflict because it turns us to peace and restores humanity to our angry hearts. We choose to celebrate in the midst of suffering because it lightens our darkness and inspires strength in our fragile hearts. We choose to celebrate in the midst of injustice because it defies evil and renews determination in our compassionate hearts. Though crosses may loom and opponents gather, through our devotion to you, we choose to embrace and enjoy for our own sake and that of the least, the healing power of celebration. As we lift our own hidden prayers to you in the silence, for you hear even that which is unspoken. Taking comfort from our prayers, may we comfort one another through your love and the sharing of your experience. God of wholeness, we celebrate the healing you bring us and our world. And we celebrate the promised wholeness that awaits all creation in your eternal reign. Hear our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is In Christ Alone.
got to enjoy the applause. May the holy wisdom of God guard your ways and guide your paths. May the living God of truth enlighten your hearts and open your minds. May the living Spirit of God give you life and life to the full. Amen.